Alright, bismillah walhamdulillah wassalatu wassalam ala sayyidil mursaleen muhammadin al-amin amma ba'd. Uh, today we're here with Brother Khalil from uh, Sunnah Cur Currency and inshallah ta'ala we'll be talking more about gold as uh, you can say currency even though I'm arguing with my mind about what is the correct word and uh, if we get a chance we might touch upon that but I'm going to let uh, Brother Khalil, inshallah, give his presentation. And uh, as we're doing the presentation, I'd like to talk about different aspects of gold in terms of now and uh, economics in terms of now, uh, the situation that we're in. And uh, so, Bismillah, Brother Khalil, um, maybe you can introduce yourself to my audience. Yes. And, uh, maybe... Um, and then we'll just take it from there, inshallah, bismillah. Yeah, a'udhu bil, na'udhu billah, na'udhu billahi min shaytani rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad, wa bishrah li sadri wa yisli amri wa halul uqtada min lisani fkahu kawri. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're just saying before we started, uh, especially to the uh, to your listeners and the audience, I'll say that I'm a very humble student uh, to be amongst uh, shake so i think i'll connect with the audience um uh, a lot more easier like that and i was just saying how uh, we always see you on youtube it's a quite surreal experience to finally get to meet we've been discussing this over whatsapp and on telegram for i think for the past couple of weeks and shake you you got injured previously or something you got yeah i got, I got injured <laughs> it's a long story but yeah, I got injured. Uh, I mean, nothing serious. I was playing basketball and then got hurt. And uh, and uh, my one leg became like twice as large as the other leg. Mashallah. But I, you know, I, I feel there was more to it than just what happened. You know, things like ayin and stuff like that. But khair, inshallah. I'm, I'm big on basketball, hey, Sheikh. I play a lot. No, I'm not that good at all. I was just standing. <laughs> Neither am I. I, just... I play a lot. I used to be a big uh, Lakers fan back in the day um, when I was small. Oh. I, growing up in the UK, there's not a lot of people who play basketball. There's only quite a few, even especially like the brothers as well. Most people are into cricket or football and basketball was like, it wasn't uh, as popular. Yeah. Yes, so, uh, alhamdulillah, it's, uh, it's very, um, I'm very humbled to be here. I think the last interview that the audience especially had was with uh, Sheikh Abdul Latif. Uh, and Mullah Abdul Latif um, so he's left me with a big, uh, a big seat to fill today. And uh, what we were saying just at the start of the call, we wanted to first give everybody an introduction of where Sunnah Currency is, uh, what's happened since the last uh, video and what's uh, currently on our roadmap. So I'll start with our packaging. A lot of uh, a lot of the brothers and sisters have been asking um, to improve our packaging, and they weren't happy with the way things were coming out. And uh, this is this is a really really important topic. So first of all, I'll show you the uh, I'll show you the gold bars and the products that we have at the moment. And then I'll show you the new certification that we've managed to create. And I'd like to talk about some of that. Um, so this is the industry standard uh, Lady um, Fortuna yeah, of the Pamp Swiss. Mm. And it's a standard gold bullion bar and it comes in a blister pack. Um, at the moment, our coins, we were distributing it to customers. We were giving coins um, like this. Mm. And then what we decided to do was um, reduce the coin packaging and then release them uh, like this. Okay. Um, then we've, we've got the, uh, the limited edition coin, which is the, uh, the Ikra coin uh, with uh, Bismillah. And then we released gold. That's actually uh, one thing I want. I was talking to you about that, but I want the audience to know that when they buy that and they put it in their wallet, for example, instead of the symbols of the pyramid or whatever other symbols you have on the dollar bill or the pound in your case, this has Islamic symbols and has an Islamic effect on the person, on the environment. And there's actually a lot to be said. I remember um, one of uh, 
the sheikhs that used to teach me, he said that, you know, uh, the, the way women wear gold, on meaning as jewelry, has an effect on them. And the way men carry gold has an effect on them. Right? So, um, and, and, you know, it's not something that you can like put in a lab and test necessarily. Um, but he was saying these, these things, these metals, these things. And we do know, for example, in, in, in the holistic medicine, for example, copper, drinking from copper uh, has certain, like one of my sheikhs, Dr. Irfan, he used to drink his chai always from a copper kettle because yeah. it had a certain benefit. Uh, yeah, drink yeah. From copper so it's the same thing it's that you know having these metals like Dawud metal was made easy for him right so we understand that not only was he able to make the first like metal armors and um, things of that nature but what does it mean that metal became easy for him so there's yeah. a certain quality Anyway, that was just a side point. Um, so let's just go back. I think to add to that as well, before we go, I'd like to show it before the bars. Just thinking when you're saying, like, if you look at rappers, and generally when men uh, wear gold, it's more out of a, a, an ego and a status symbol, and it associates itself with a lot of pride. Uh, and, and ladies, uh, not to generalize, but you see more of an elegance or more of a beautification of gold. It's more worn, more as adornment rather than a status symbol to enhance beauty. So subhanAllah, look at the, the, the simple things of the sunnah that we uh, underestimate, Shaykh. This here is the 10-gram uh, uh, gold bar. Now, uh, a lot of users, uh, customers have asked us, like, why? So we're doing bars as well because, uh, you know, sunnah currency is a wealth preservation of the ummah. Our main product, of course, is dinar, dinar and dirham, according to the... Uh, commissioning of Umar Khattab radiallahu an and uh, Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan. Uh, bars we've started to look into because of Boolean investment. We've had a lot of uh, customers ask us to look into this. So we've started uh, commissioning bars. So the, the, the packaging uh, is not exactly the most beautiful. Uh, Actually, I'm very impressed. I, it. I mean, you know, my wife is very picky too, and she was impressed too. Yeah. yeah, from the very beginning. I mean, she was like, wow, this is like, you know, they were pretty big. Uh, but if the, with, the, with the silver, uh, Sheikh, with, uh, when, when you got you in your packaging, he, silver gets oxidized. Uh, an oxidation effect happens on silver. Like I show, if I open this uh, coin here, Bismillah, yeah, Fattah. And you may not be able to see it, but the, because it's a natural metal, uh, oxidation starts starts to happen. Yeah, I have and, that point. Yeah. One of the ones well, I got. Spots, they call it. So then we, we went into these um, airtight seal packaging. But what I really want to show um, our brothers and sisters today is uh, the new roadmap and some of the new packaging that we've started. So we've, we've created our own blister packs. So now all Sunna currency coins and bars will have uh, this plastic blister pack. It'll be protected in these uh, blister packs. If you follow us on Instagram or social media, you, you'll see the videos of how the assayer places them inside these, how he seals it. And if you look on the top right-hand side, you'll see a QR code. This QR code is only a sample in these images, um, but not only adds a beautification to the bar, but we've become certified by the islamic monetary council uh and what what that means is now when you when you buy from sunnah currency you will have your coin or bar all of them uh receive a unique certification code which is called a tayyib uh, id and when you scan it automatically it will take you to the islamic monetary uh, uh, uh website and I'll just show an example here just for, 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 for the benefit of everybody. But let's say this is um, a Sunna currency uh, bar and I scan it with my phone. It will automatically take you to the Tayyib scanner. I'll put a sample code here. 
and it will validate the certificate in real time and it will give you your Tayyib reference ID. So you know, and the seller, if you're planning to sell the coin or if you're planning to, to make some profit out of it, Bismillah, uh, and the you can download a real time PDF certificate, which is signed and digitally approved and it's unique uh, according to the, uh, the QR code. So all our products now are 100% um, Sharia compliant. Our services, even our backend, our technology that we use, we don't use any riba, or any riba system. Um, you recommend, or, and this would be like one really big advantage in a sense, I guess, is that when you buy these coins, you should print out these certificates because as you're, if the system falls, for example, if the city collapses and now you have gold, and if you have at least few of these certificates printed out with you and you're carrying them with you, you can show the people, look, I have this. This the, because I think that's a really good idea, Shay, because right now the certificates, uh, the QR code gives you a Thayab ID, it's secure on there, but you need to, obviously you, you need the internet to scan it and the seller needs to verify it. But um, I will definitely take that feedback back uh, to give out a certificate with the customer's actual order. Um, or maybe we yeah, can I mean, nice that's possible because once uh, and, and maybe you can create some sort of pouch where these certificates can be put in for the long term. Yeah, so that uh, you know, when the city does collapse and uh, you know, the people are in chaos and you're going to make your hijra and now you're out in your hijra land and you're negotiating something with, let's say, even a non Muslim, I need your cherries. Uh, for a year and here's a gold coin you can have because I, I I I mean not even a gold coin a silver coin would probably do it um, because obviously the value of gold is going to increase dramatically at that point um, yeah Def Sheikh is I think it's a, such a good you know we had an interview before uh, with um, Abu even though Amer the coin also says it on it the uh, the 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 percent but if you have a certificate it's even better because it also yeah, really weight. good idea mashallah look when uh the great imam Mehdi, uh when the arrival happens my own mindset is what will happen to electricity when there's no electricity there's no digital currency it's finished <laughs> it's your bitcoin that people carry is valueless you, yeah, of course, yeah, you're gonna get your laptop out. You're not you're gonna be able to transfer the coin to him because you need the internet in order to exchange. And in, 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 in any physical. serious, any serious confrontation that would lead to World War Three, one of the first things that they're gonna do, that they must do, that they absolutely have to do, is to cut the internet lines in the seabed. Yeah, yeah, Sheikh, absolutely. Um, and, and all the major major internet cables will will will, will go because the advantage uh, it's like making the country go blind yeah. right so there's no communication so if they see the planes of like let's say if i'm in america and they see russian planes internet's down no one can communicate you know if the phones are down the internet's down the, the first thing is to make everyone as blind as possible and uh anyway so there is a good Check this one more point on the roadmap if i may I forgot for one point was just on that on that note was um, when we talk about uh, electricity and, and and the value of gold and silver right now gold and silver um, in fact since 1971 since the uh, since Nixon did his changes and made gold not backed or pegged to the U.S. dollar uh, we had the forming of the IMF we had the forming of the World Gold Council. Gold, gold, like a lot of people don't know, gold, like the market fluctuates. Yeah, I think gold is now, uh, you know, 1700 or uh, almost $1,800 a try ounce. Okay, but that price, brothers and sisters, like where does that price come from? Have you ever thought of this? The market, we, there's, there's, there's a massive economics that take place to stipulate the value of that price, but ultimately it's decided by the World Gold Council. Um, they have the monopoly holders of what gold price should be. So with the IMC, why we chose to be certified with them is that 
if you look here, the uh, record, and the, I think if you can put this description in, 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 the, uh, <coughs> in the description as well, the, the mathematics behind it, Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu an, two great things uh, that he did, uh, billah, many things, right? Uh, Amir al um, but I'm just, my own ignorant mindset, I'm just saying, just picking two things out, uh, because I know the comment will have a lot <laughs> The compilation of the Quran and the form, form, mathematical formula of the gold and dinar and the silver dirham. Because at that time, people were exchanging, there was a barter system. And as part of the barter system, one was rice, one was grain, one was camels. You know, I want your wife, I want, I'll give you five camels. But one was gold and silver. And the purification and the denomination and the mathematical sizes, the weight, none of that was formalized. So what the IMC do, we follow their, uh, we follow all the criterias in terms of their sizes. So all the coins, what there's five gold coins in Islam, there's five silver coins in Islam, what the weight is, what the dimension, what the circumference is, uh, the evidence behind them. Why is that? That's why we chose to go with the IMC. And they've got a page where it explains the maths uh, and their nominal value. So uh, where gold or well, silver might be $19, the IMC will say, no, gold and silver is actually worth more. In terms of fiat, it's worth more because uh, there's there's a poverty in the Muslim Ummah. Uh, there's many things which uh, they've formalized the mathematical nominal value against the fiat. Mm. You know, burial prices in the UK are extortionate, Sheikh. So mm. I recommend the brothers and sisters, you know, that's the why we're encouraging people to sell, sorry, to buy or sell uh, Sunnah currency and support the IMC um, because for, for, for one of those reasons. Yeah, I mean, if you if somebody had invested in gold, what, 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, they would have, what, would it be a thousand percent investment by now or almost, be a, I don't know what the exact number is. We but... posted on Instagram the other day and Twitter, I did a mathematical formula of 50 years of gold, yeah? So gold, if you look at Amazon, if you look at Facebook, Tesla, Bitcoin especially, it's, it's just stagmented. Gold just been like this. Brothers, just, I kid you not, go and do, go to any gold, forget the IMC, for, go to any Western gold price calculator, go to the last 50 years or five years, gold and silver have just gone up. My teacher, Ustad, uh, mm, Mufti Zaid, he, that he says, he told me years ago, and I wish I did it. He said, um, you can never go wrong in investing in gold. You can never go wrong. It's just something that's never going to let you down uh, buying gold. Uh, so subhanAllah. That's Quran. A, I mean, it's yeah. mentioned in the Quran, you know, and the Quran gives you the best picture of dunya. You know, the best of dunya is not what we have. The best of picture of dunya is the way the Quran paints the picture of dunya because the Quran is telling you don't go for the best of dunya for the best of akhirah right and so when we we our concepts of dunya are actually even perverted in in face of the the quranic concept of of, of the beauty of dunya so to say and uh, this, the reason i'm saying this is that part of that picture of dunya is the heaping up of piles of gold and silver yeah so you can say goldman sachs brothers they have piles of gold and silver they have the best of dunya but but you've but the rest of us have been tricked <laughs> to to get something else in its place i mean they're, they're the people really who have the best of dunya because they have something that has real value yeah and Sheikh, I, even for me i was i was a learner as well um uh, now I stack gold and silver regularly and it's it's completely different brothers and sisters like you know buying property or cryptocurrency um investing in gold and silver there's there's a physical attachment to it when you're reading Quran or you're trying to hipster you get a relationship with it can't describe it with gold and silver not in terms of greed but you appreciate it it's like a real treasure um it's precious your gold your silver you don't easily want to part with it yeah, you don't easily want to part with it, even if it's the market. You'll so. definitely think ten times more 
parting away yeah. with silver yeah. or gold than with paper money. That's for sure. Um, I know one brother, I gave him the Sunnah currency as a gift. And he keeps it by his bedside, he told me. You know, and I guess he looks at it every day. You know, like it's just, it's, I just look at it. I don't remember his exact words, but, you know, I look at it every day and it's just there. You know, it has a certain feel to it. And it's pretty powerful, especially with the symbols that are now, you know, the Khilafah symbol. And uh, and then there are other symbols that you have. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's very, very powerful. And so... Um, Jake, you were talking at the start before, like about um, mass production or making uh, mass coins like in the state of uh, or, or, or something like that and one of the our roadmap items um for the brothers and sisters noise so look we're looking at um you know i've always said in business what helps people helps business um we're looking at getting a refinery machine uh in the uk and that's what we're actually saving up for so the first thing we wanted to make sure brothers and sisters can sell uh, the coins uh, legally uh, and you're getting certified by an Asharia a compliant body and the ulema are backing it and there's du'as behind it and your investment is safe. Um, and then the, the refinery machine to print at mass. Our coins are Boolean standard. Yeah, this is the number one uh, uh, the number one coin that we have at the moment. I don't like to use the word selling with uh, maybe some nice number. Um Boolean means it's, it's very much beautified. It's made at um, a, a, a beautified standard. Whereas if you look at any gold or Islamic coin uh, in the past, that production in mass, you would just melt the coin down or melt the mint down or the Boolean and you would just press it once and get a hallmark stamp like this. This is a... Uh, a Ten dollar bar, which is around one hundred and fifteen, I think, one hundred and sixteen grams. Uh, but there's no beauty on this. There's no beautification on this. But this is solid, pure, heavy, heavy gold. Mm. And I think that would be sort of the mass idea because um, we wouldn't be using paper money in the Islamic world. We'd be using the barter system, whether that's wheat, barley, dates, camels, sheep, stock, cattle, and gold and silver would be part of that. Um, so that's how I would see it. I wouldn't see it, like the beautified coins I would see in like with gifts and collection, giving you memorize that you become a hafiz, you've had an aqika, you'd gift the coin or you'd make, we would do custom coins. So if you want your name on the coin or you want to say like Bayt al-Khalil for your family, all your generation. But I think that was, that would be like the Darul Khilafa, like in Afghanistan, they said they were looking at doing mint. Um, I think they would be mass printing those yeah um one other advantage uh as i'm looking into the future is that if you have a gold coin at the standard a standard of omar bin khattab specifically then even if you don't have enough for that community but you have one real standard to start off with right so if you do your hijra and you have a land and let's say one brother, he happened to buy from Sunnah currency one day and he has, you know, a few of these coins. Now that society, that hijra group will have a model from which they can now, if they have the ability to mine, yeah, then they'll have that Sunnah currency.com coin that's on the standard of Omar bin Khattab. Then they'll be able to say, okay, they can develop mechanisms to measure the weight using water or whatnot, or come very close to it and create currency based upon Sunnah currency yeah. uh, as much as possible. So that's the other thing is that everyone should have, everyone should at least have one and two gold, a few of the gold, a few of the silver, so that when you do do your hijab, and the question of money comes up, then you're able to present, okay, look, this is the weight we need. This is the standard. 
right? So let's go back to the standard of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu. So well, that was South Africa, Sheikh. It was called Mola Ridwan Kaji. He did a series about Dajjal. I'm not sure if you've seen it, um, but it was very interesting. It's the almost, I think there's 15 videos. Each one is like an hour and 10 minutes. No, and sure. he discusses the difference between Ibn Sayyid. Uh, By the way, this particular scholar that you mentioned, he's very great. Uh, I mean, the lectures I did hear from him. I benefited from each one of those. And I think his Arabic is very strong. Inshallah. And his knowledge, as far as I know, the brother is, is very uh, strong, mashallah. I was very happy to see. Fortunate to meet him uh, in Dubai when he came. Um, but the, 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 the Jal series specific, he's very direct. He just says in a question, he says, okay, let's say uh, the call is made here yeah, and people are doing bayah at the Kaaba. And you're at home, maybe you're watching BBC, or, and I, I don't have a TV, in case the person says, somebody says in the comments, I don't have a TV, but I do watch YouTube because I'm a big fan of Sheikh, right? Let's let's put the cards at the table. But let's say, for some reason, somebody WhatsApps me before they cut the internet off. And I see Imam Mehdi. Obviously, it's going to come in your heart, yeah? And then, then it's not going to be some flan flan guy saying, I'm the Mehdi, I'm the Mehdi, no, the Billah. But you know it's him. And I'm just giving this scenario that we know it's him. And you're traveling with your family to the border. And the guy at the border saying, look, you know, I will let you in, but sort me out, it's, you know, it's, I need a family as well. He's not going to take you pound or your dollars. <laughs> He's not going to take it. He's not. Are you going to sit at home and you sort your mortgage out or worry about your finance or your wife's going to go, you know, where are you going? you you got to work tomorrow, boy. you got to work. <laughs> You know, now I'm going to take my gold and silver. That's it. What can you do? You've not got a choice. You've not got a choice. I don't know the hadith because I'm not an alim, but Shaykh, there's something like you, you'll walk or crawl on ice to, <laughs> to take the pledge. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there are many forms of that hadith, but basically the idea is to go to the Mahdi even if you have to crawl on ice. But there's another aspect to that that I'd like to share on top of what the Sheikh mentioned is that there, there will be no borders and there will be no nation states and there will be no people coming like the Hadith in Sahih Bukhari mentions people coming from Syria and it's people coming from the, the Abdal of Allah coming from Iraq and Syria. How are they going to do that? They can't do that under the current system. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no. they can only do that once the nation states fall. And when the nation states fall, the other question is resolved, which is that why will people go back to their religions? You know, we live in a secular environment. Religion is not, you know, the religion as it is right now, if you project into the future, you don't see religion. But people go back to religion because when nation states fall, it'll be the only force of cohesion. Hmm. Okay. And so they will have whatever they have, but the only source of cohesion after a nation state is going to be religion. And so people are going to identify with their religion and fight for their religions. And so uh, when the nation states fall, people from all over can come to Mecca. Hmm. You see, so uh, yeah. uh, I very strongly feel that because of the ayah in Sutul, um, which I consider uh, this ayah to be the most important ayah of the next 20 years. And that is the ayah in Sutul Isra, Immin Qariyatin Nahnu Muhlikuha, Qabla Yawm Al Qiyamah. There will be no city except we will destroy it before the Day of Judgment. Or we will punish it, Adab and Shadida, with a severe punishment. And that's written in a book that's going to happen. So everyone has to think, okay, what will I do when my city is punished and falling apart? What am I going to do? What am I supposed to do according to the deen? So there are a few options there, which I'm not going to, that's not the subject right now, but the point is your city and my city, whether you're in Tokyo or Washington, D.C. or Islamabad or Lahore or in Delhi, all those cities are going to have a collapse because they're all interlinked. When, when, the, when, when certain big cities fall, when Tokyo falls, New York, 
the city of New York falls and London falls and some of these big cities fall, everything's gonna fall. And so um, anyway, I, I was only mentioning that, that uh, the hijab will become necessary. Yeah. Everyone will, whether you're ready for it today or tomorrow, you'll have to start walking at some point. Uh, so the reason I, I'm, I'm saying that is because, uh, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, but yeah, the, the, the nation, when cities fall, the nation states will fall, hmm. right? And when the nation states fall, then you can go anywhere after that. So, yeah. So that's ultimately, uh, the goal is not to protect ourselves. The goal is to protect our deen and to protect Islam. Uh, otherwise, it just might be a blessing to die before all this happens in some ways. Yeah. The level of test it will be. But yeah, so I just wanted to express that because, okay, so now when there's no city state, when there's no currency being printed, there's no more paper money being printed. What will be what will be your thing you're gonna carry? Uh, yeah, and a lot of people don't have barley or rice, or you, your value would be less compared to silver or gold. If I've got gold and silver, and my neighbor's got tons of rice, I'll I'll, I'll be I, I believe I'd be in a better situation in terms of wealth or uh, influence than him. Yeah, so you know I'll give you a little most. You still know, have mentioned silver. Because it's the most, uh, you can say, useful in terms of gold will be rarely used in a sense that it has a lot more value, right? So you're not going to pay everyone for every service in gold. Most of the time, you're going to pay people if you're going to pay in silver, in, if you're not exchanging, or if it's not a service that your own community offers. Like, yeah. for example, maybe like the Amish people, right? Everybody builds everyone's house. So they all come together and build the new person's house. So that's one level so so the basic substance is subs, subsistence level a lot of that's covered just from the community pitching in together and doing things together and then you have resources that are particular to your area like rice or whatever commodities you have but what is it that's universal yeah uh, that you can use at any uh, what if you have something that they don't need right they don't need your fish or they don't yeah. need rice. Well, then now you have silver and gold. And one thing I'll touch upon so that, and, and you can chime in whenever you feel, um, is that as more money is being printed, your current, your value of your assets are getting less and less. And I'll explain this way that let's say uh, this is the bank and I have a, hundred dollars here an outside my bank is a thousand dollars or let's say outside my bank is nine hundred dollars and in my bank is a hundred dollars so my value is ten percent hmm. right i have ten percent of the assets of the entire lot now if we print more money now instead of nine hundred dollars there's one thousand nine hundred dollars outside and nine hundred dollars or uh, uh, I have $900 now inside. So what has happened? The value of the assets that I have in my bank have just decreased by 50%, right? But as that process happens, and as you print more money and you print more money, you print more money, you print more money, you're, each time you're printing more money, the overall value of that paper money is decreasing. Yeah. Right. And the, the, the and this is very important because I wanted to bring out this aspect is that the currency that has to have value has to not only one aspect is it's intrinsically valuable, meaning gold is intrinsically valuable. Why is gold intrinsically valuable or why is silver intrinsically valuable? Because there's something Allah put in the hearts of men and women that we like it. We want it. The Arabic word for mal, mal, wealth, it comes from mala yamilu, what your heart inclines towards. Okay. 
if your heart doesn't incline towards something, your heart doesn't incline towards garbage, has no value for you. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put Zuyyina lil nasi hubbu shahwa, the ayah of, of Sutul Al Imran, that we put the love of gold and silver in the heart of every man. And part of the, the, the changing of fitra of man, right? Part of that changing your fitra, your nature, is to change your sense of money. Okay. I agree with you, really, Sheikh. Yeah, subhanAllah. Because yeah. now you're not inclined to what is naturally inclining to you. Right? So you're not inclined towards gold and silver. That means that you're not inclined to something Allah put in your heart to be inclined towards you, that yeah. you have natural value for. But my point was that some why is wealth wealth? The Arabic word wealth means for something for which the heart inclines towards. Yeah. It doesn't have any value if the hearts of men don't incline to it. It wouldn't be considered an asset. Yeah. So you, you've probably heard of the tulip uh, mania that happened in Denmark 400 years ago. No so shit. 400 years ago, what happened is there was a tulip. Okay. A tulip that in the hearts of men, that tulip, began to have so much value that they would sell their houses to have this tulip. It was called a tulip mini. But then they realized one day, okay, oh, wait, it's just a tulip. Why are we selling our businesses and our houses just to get one little flower? They woke up because of different reasons, because you know, it, it was like a bubble. It was yeah. too much in value. And then it burst. And they realized, wait, we overvalued. And so, so many people lost their houses and their businesses and all that. This happened about 400 years ago. You can look it up, tulip, tulip, tulip mania. But what does it tell you about human psychology and money? Yeah. It tells you that we incline towards something it has value. Yeah. And then later on, it may not have value because it's nothing is constant. But yeah. gold and silver will be constant. Yeah. Gold and silver will always have value in the hearts of men. And so Allah has made us that way. So not only is it intrinsically valuable, but there's another aspect to it that's very important. And that is different from paper money. And that is that paper money, you can print it at any moment you feel it's necessary to print it. So like during the, the Circus 19 situation that we had, America was printing more money in one year than 20 years of war so that they can give everybody a package. Everyone was getting, I don't know, $1,800 or every citizen. So they printed, I think it was like 16 trillion. They got $16 trillion in debt in one yeah. year. Okay. Because they can print the money. Now the problem with printing too much money too fast, what happens? You get in debt and your value of your currency falls. Yeah. If it is something too hard to get, meaning if we were to make a currency out of something that's deep in the uh, earth and it's very hard to get and it's very expensive to get and you can't get it, then that would not be good either. Yeah. But if it's too easy to print, that's not good either. You need a currency that um, that is not too hard to get, but not too easy to get. Yeah. <clears throat> right. So that keeps you in, in check. And so gold is something and silver is something that is not impossible to get. It's difficult, but not impossible. And you can't just print it out of the blue. And all of a sudden, because you wanted to go to war, you printed a bunch of money, which is yeah. why they left gold in the first place. Keep this in mind. Historically, we left uh, the gold, what was at that time called the gold standard, so that we can go to war. Uh, world War One, World War Two. It was all based upon riba and the bank. It was all the bankers doing everything. Yeah. They, were, they were just having all this money printed and debt created, which is the result of, uh, which which is what allowed them to fight the wars. If they had stayed within the gold standard, truly, they wouldn't. There would have been no World War One and World War Two. And if there is no riba, 
there will be no World War III if there's no riba. Because you can't have such a big war. Mm. The standard of human beings is that we had short-term mini mini area wars. There was no, there was never enough money that you could take on the whole world. Yeah. You know, that and 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 they tell us we're expansionists. Our 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 economic system does not allow us to be expansionists. Yeah. It's only when you've conquered one area. If conquered Syria, only then you can go to Egypt. Once you've conquered Egypt, then you can go to Iraq, for example, like that. But you can't just take on like 10, 20 different fronts and fight a big war and for 20 years. How do you fight? You can't, I mean, you know, there were wars for a long time, but they were very limited in their scope in the past compared to now. You can create so much debt. You can go to war against the whole world. Yeah, it devalues it as well, Sheikh. Just right, exactly. Yeah. Process of gold. How we do it when we mine it, uh, melt it down, smelter it, uh, smelter it. Uh, we have to do uh, a lot of things. Uh, to work it. This is my son. Mashallah. So. Um, the, the melting, shake the, the, the craftsmanship that goes into the work. Um, I was just thinking about the miners and subhanAllah, it's, it's very difficult to describe the the work, the passion that goes into making gold, whereas printed money is just drafted and drafted and drafted. Yeah. So anything else you want to share, inshallah? No, just just on the same 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 points. I'm sometimes like a, a silent thinker, but it's not fair when you're doing a, a YouTube video. You've got to be dynamic. You've got to be speaking. And when you with, with um, the way you're talking, it's just seeping through. And I'm just trying to uh, extract and um, uh, collaborate with you, Sheikh. One thing you said was, um, look about digital currency. A lot of customers ask us, yeah, and metaverse. My 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 auntie, she just recently flew to visit here, and uh, she's like. 75 close to um i hope she's not watching right maybe she's less than seven now the village is much younger but as soon as she got in the car she you know how are you how's things how's family none of this conversation really happened she just went straight into the fact that she just come from a trip from uh from 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 pakistan that all her nephews and nieces they're glued to their devices uh, they're glued to their phones, they're glued to uh, uh, VR, to virtual reality. And I said, okay, like, tell me what, because I work in tech. And she said, um, when they're feeding their kids, and because uh, because you've got such an audience, I just want all the brothers and sisters, because I know even sometimes uh, I'm a bit of a culprit here if I'm at a restaurant. And now me, me and my wife, we're so strict on, on the device. It's like a, a treat and I have to check the content beforehand, yeah? But they were eating their food. Um, I'm just, I didn't want to get my phone because uh, it would have been rude for you, Sheikh, but they're eating their, they're watching something, their parents are feeding them food and they don't even, you know, turn around to look at the food, they're just like this. And somebody asked me, well, oh, digital currency, we, we, we need to talk about the ulama and digital currency. People are doing nikah and VR and people are doing nikah and metaverse. What was the currency on that? And I said, look, why, why should we support it? You know, the, the, we, we need to think about, um, we need to think about the metaverse and, and VR as a whole and what value it's going to have. Of course, we live in Darul Kufr. Some things we can't do. You have to get car insurance in the UK. There's this by the law. Um, and the ulema, they've got, they've wrote different scenarios on it. But the the world of VR and and, and technology and people asking us about digital currency, why we're we not doing an NFT, or why we're we not supporting crypto or blockchain. Um, you know, if you if you're a scholar or build start there into technology, come reach out to us. Let's let's collaborate. Let's build something. But th there has to be some some um, some ruhi. Uh, uh, attributed value in it you know, somebody said to me oh i'm gonna do in the future i won't name the brother but he was just talking like crazy ideas i'm gonna be sat wearing my imama at the hayatu with my ustad doing quran but i'm gonna be in my pajamas at home how cool is that he said i said that's frightening <laughs> where's the therapy 
I go nowadays when you're doing that, you're doing an you know on an Islamic course, you're on Zoom anyway. People are sat at home having coffee, they're doing an ilm class, and for whatever reason, but you can't do Umrah, Hajj, and, and you know there there has to be some sort of, of of limit or restriction. You know the CEO of Netflix, yeah, he did this TEDx talk, and uh, he asked his audience, "What is our biggest competitor? Name two competitors, right?" And again, I don't have Netflix, but. You know, people were saying uh, Amazon Prime. Uh, they were coming out with all these different answers. And this guy, <laughs> shit, this guy, you know what he said? Start with the last, they saw that their mind, look at it. He said, our biz- biggest competitor is your sleep and your personal relationships with people. You know, how would they be lamb and they, they implemented an autoplay feature. So just to keep you going, keep you going, keep you going, keep you going. And that, that, that world now, uh, technology is moving so fast, Sheikh, so fast, so fast, so fast. Back in the day, like 20 years ago in tech, people were, talk, were talking about big data and AI there. We were building bots and I was programming uh, machine learning. But now, Sheikh, in the next five or 10 years, um, it's happening. Electric cars are on the rise. Um, it's actually, you know, it's not yeah, just something I mean, we're talking New York about. State, uh, it's now going to be illegal in 2035 to have gas based yeah. cars shake there's my my a friend of mine in work his son is an 11 year old he's on metaverse and he's talking to me oh you're in tech i said but i don't know what metaverse is. <laughs> tummy boy he's already making money he's <laughs> trading on there playing games on there you know they're completely indoctrinated yeah. it's a cold whole new world yeah um, i mean the problem with technology is not what it does for you but what it says to you about you meaning technology is saying something to us too you know we created technology so that it would be like a tool yeah right but the problem with this tool is that it's telling us basically teaching us that we are gods and that's basically what human beings are beginning to think themselves as that I can get yeah. whatever I want with the press of a button. And I can, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a God of my world. I can create my own world. I, this whole metaverse thing is all about having the world that you want, create whatever you want, make whatever you want. You make it in the virtual yeah. world. I can be Superman or Spider-Man or whatever I want in, in, the, in that world. I can literally like a, like a, a God. But there's another aspect to this. And a lot of people uh, don't like when I criticize. They're like, I had one brother say, you know, I like everything you say, but I don't like your criticisms of technology. Um, and m- maybe I'm wrong, but uh, one of the things about uh, technology is if you remember the ayah in Sutta Saad about the jasad, Right, we all know about the ayah about the jasad, but remind me, Shay, please, if you go, don't mind. You know that Suleiman alayhi sees a vision of a shaitan sitting on his throne. Okay. Right, and Allah subhanahu wa taala calls it a jasad, a dead body. Right, and uh, there's another, there's a hadith that relates to this according to the tafsirs of Quran, which is that Suleiman alayhi had, he went to his wives, he had children, and they were all coming out dead okay the reason i relate that to that particular verse in from a different perspective is that one is like the jasad which is the jad right has no has no ruh he's just jasad but we're also becoming just jasad we're killing our ruh because of this technology because the the what does technology teach you technology teaches to think like a computer if this then that if this, then that. That's the level of where our thinking is good. We've done away with imagination. We've done away with, uh, you know, one of the, because I, I think from your wordings, I can tell that you're, you, you have been in the world of tasawwuf. But the idea of muraqaba, yeah, which takes imagination, right? Worship Allah as if you see him. Yeah. Right? This world of intentions, this world of attention, and this world of where you're using your imagination to create a reality or to under or to absorb a reality within you. Yeah. So 
that is completely gone from people that are on, on the screen because they're being taught how to also think. And the way the computers think is the way that we are predominantly thinking. Yeah. So we're thinking in completely a cause and effect way. And I, I can, if I had more time, I would demonstrate that. But if yeah. I said, you know, is it possible that uh, I'm flying? Just ask this question. Is it possible that I'm flying? The person that is completely empirical and logical in the sense of being empirical, meaning only the world of cause and effect and what happens in the cause and effect is logic, you would say, no, it's not possible for you to fly. But rationally, I can imagine myself to fly. Yeah. Right? I can rationally imagine myself to fly. That me It is rationally possible. It's not absurd. It's not like I'm saying uh, a square hole. Yeah. Right? That would be, that's not rationally possible. Yeah. That's not empirically possible or rationally possible, but the idea I'm flying. So what does that do to our imagination when you're thinking completely at the empirical cause and effect level of, and that's what you consider logic. I don't know if what I said made sense, but uh, technology informs us about ourselves and yeah. what it takes away from us is our, is our uh, imagination and our curiosity and our, uh, our spirituality. Yeah. If you uh, want an answer, don't do istikhara, look it up on Google. Uh, yeah. This, you know, this type. So there is definitely, um, I'm sorry going on rant on that, but this goes back to our issue of sunnah currency because when we're trying to give you hard currency to put in your pocket that you can feel and touch, it's not, digital money like in your bank no right? it's not it's, it's not real, it's real money and when the whole system comes crashing down that money that you have in the bank you'll be lucky if you get it you'll be very lucky you know the only thing that you'll really have is the hard currencies you have in your hand and then you're gonna know okay wait we were living in a fake world and it just came down so anyway, maybe I should... Jake, there's two, two last points for me then. Uh, I'd also mention uh, to... We're not... There's, there's, there's so many brands that are coming out now supporting the LGBT shake uh, and brothers and sisters are buying gold and oh. silver. Do consider um, Sunnah Currency. First, you'll get a discount through Sheikh's code and uh, you're also supporting the Islamic Monetary Council. You're supporting brothers who... Uh, um, we're trying to make something better. Um, and it's a wealth preservation for the Ummah. Look, if you're a student and you got a chance to buy some gold from Sunnah Quran and you want to sell later on, Bismillah, go for it. Uh, for gifts, for hifs, for mahar, for Fatimiya, you, you want to get met, our silver coins, buy them. The brands that are coming out now, they're supporting LGBT and all types of movements and Fitra Sheikh. So, no, seriously, Jazakallah Khairan for having us on Sheikh. Um, a lot, a lot to think about. Um, some interesting topics and some feedback that I'll definitely take back to the brothers. Mashallah. Um, I really, really, I was really, I really enjoyed it, Sheikh. Thank you, Jazakumullah Khair. And I enjoyed being with you and talking with you. And Alhamdulillah, I'm very happy that this project is moving forward. Uh, and I wish Allah Subhanahu wa Taala puts more baraka in it and more, Inshallah, speed into it, Inshallah. Ameen. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum